Hi everyone, it's Nicole Spore here today for Simon Says Stamp with another Making the Cut video. Thank you so much for joining me today. We're going to be using the Simon Says Stamp Circle Thin Frames Wafer Thin Dies and a whole bunch of other fun Simon Says Stamp exclusive dies to create these rainbow circle backgrounds. The whole base of the card consists of die cutting the circle thin frames from many colors of cardstock and then assembling them on the front of a top fold card base. The only white you're really going to see is the four corners of the card. Now, what I did to die cut these with the frames, because the dies actually are that the little teeny, teeny tiny thin frame, and then you can see I'm, used, I'm adhering wider frames as well. To do this, I actually took two frames at a time and would temporarily tape them together with a little post-it tape and run them through my die cutting machine. And I would get not only the thin frames, but I would also get the in-between piece which is what I'm using to create the thin and then wider rainbow circles that are going to make up the card background. There are a couple of different ways to add glue here. Um, I found liquid glue was the easiest and you will also notice that the larger circles are going to hang off the edge of the card. That is completely fine. I just want the middle circle to be kind of centered. And I actually think put when I put the second card together, it went together a little easier because I started from the middle and worked my way out. Either way is going to be fine as long as you are centering it as close as you can. I did not measure it. I just kind of eyeballed it. And then I'm taking some Lawn Fawn glue tube liquid glue. You can use any liquid glue here. I think I also use Ranger Multi Matte Medium at some point. Um, whatever you want to use will work. And then I just drew little thin lines on and I'm simply going to adhere those circles one after another until I fill in this entire area. Now you can see all the circles over there on the left side of the screen. I did one kind of, I would call it more um, rainbow or normal rainbow, I guess I want to say, where it's like pink, red, light orange, dark orange, light yellow, dark yellow, light green, dark green, so on and so forth. But I have all those extra pieces from when I taped my rings together to die cut. So I already have extras to create my other background. And so on the second background, it's just kind of opposite. So it's going to go, instead of from pink to red, it's going to go red to pink. And really, I don't know which background I like better. I really like them both. I don't think you have to do it in the traditional rainbow order, quote unquote, if you don't want to, to get a really great result. And because I already had all of these rings already die cut, I wanted to go ahead and use them um, so that I didn't have very much waste. So I'm going to continue to adhere all of these rings for my first background and I'm going to speed it up a little bit to save some time. Now a little tip, because the glue probably isn't going to be on every little bit of the ring just because of how I'm adhering it, my suggestion is once it's completely dry, so I kind of let my background sit off to the side and let it completely dry all the way. Then I slipped it in between um, a folded sheet of regular white printer paper and then ran it through my die cutting machine. And I did that so that the marks on my die cutting machine from the, the cutting plates would not make marks on my background or, or my card base. I ran it through my die cutting machine and it kind of just presses and kind of holds, I guess, or secures those rings to your card so well. It's one of my favorite little tips um, to kind of smush or smash it all down so that it's really nice and flat when you're doing an inlay type design like this ended up being. 
So here's the second card, and I really think this is probably the better way to adhere them, starting from the center and working your way out. But again, it's totally whatever you want to do. And I'm going to just continue to add all of my rings until I get the whole thing covered with these awesome little uh, ring designs and have two completely uh, beautiful rainbow backgrounds. You could also use rectangles or squares or anything else. You definitely don't have to stick to circles. Um, to me, this kind of reminds me of the Looney Tunes circle. Um, I guess that's probably showing my age. But uh, when I would watch cartoons when I was little, in the circle that the characters would pop out of. That's kind of what I was going for here, um, just as the inspiration. Once we have all of our thin circle frames in place, we are ready to start assembling the cute scene on the front of the card. The background definitely took the longest for these cards, and then I simply die cut the rest of the components, and we're gonna put it all together. These cards actually feature zero stamping. It's completely die cut, except for some little thin sentiment strips that I simply trimmed into strips to add to the bottom of the card to kind of help reinforce the die cut sentiment that we're using. I have die cut the Big Picture Book Elephant Wafer Thin Die and the Big Picture Book Little Body Wafer Thin Die for this first card. And I adhered the body of the elephant directly to the card base and we're going to pop up the head and ears of the elephant as well as the trunk to give it a little bit of dimension. I like having the head um, a little bit more in the forefront of the card, so I use foam adhesive back behind that. And the foam adhesive is also going to serve as a great way to add any inlay pieces, including the eyes and the tusks. And I love tipping the heads at a little bit of an angle. I think it gives a little bit of character to the picture book animals, which is really fun. You can use any of the picture book animals that you have on hand as the bodies and the heads all um, are interchangeable, which is really awesome if you have any of the critters from the big picture book line. So there's several different body options. We're using this small, uh, are the little body and the medium body today, but there's a large body and there's a whole bunch of other ones in the Simon Says Stamp picture book collection. Then I have a sentiment strip. This is from the Simon Says Stamp sentiment strips artist collection. And I thought it worked really well because our critters are gonna be holding on to art supplies today. These kind of cards are perfect for sending to your crafty friends or anyone. And I love that the art supplies wafer thin dies are kind of sized perfectly to work with these big picture book critters, which is really, really fun. I glued the bold hello die cut there to the bottom of our uh, picture book little body, or we're gonna glue it down there. And you can see I've added the tusks and the eyes. And I popped up the sentiment strip with a little foam adhesive I will tell you, I wish I would have glued the hello in place before I adhered the body to the card. And I'm going to be a little smarter with the second background or the second card because it's super, it was uh, much more easy, I guess I want to say, to adhere all the components then because I adhered the bold thanks to that one first. But we're just going to kind of carefully lift up the arms of our elephant or our little body here and tuck the hello right there along the bottom edge of the body. And then the rest of the sentiment is that little sentiment strip down below, which kind of helps ground everything on the card. I only put adhesive under the very bottom edge of the bold hello so that I'm able to tuck the paintbrush, uh, ends of the paintbrushes and the scissors kind of back behind the hello sentiment. And I'll show you that here in a second. So I've got two of the paint brushes from the Art Supplies Wafer Thin Dies, and I'm gonna kind of just put those at angles so that they kind of appear to be being held by the elephant and also underneath the hello so they're not inhibiting being able to read the sentiment. 
And then we are simply paper piecing all the little pieces together there for the art supplies. So the art supplies comes with your paint palette, paint brush, everything to build that, and some great little scissors. It is a fantastic little set. And I have used it to create an all over background for another card I had done um, a while back. But I thought, wouldn't it be cute if some critters could hold them? So I love when there are additional dies that are sized for these big picture book critters to hold, because I think that really just makes for a fun design element. So this one's going to be holding, or this elephant's going to be holding two paintbrushes and a pair of scissors. For the scissors, we have the scissor base, and then for the handles, you can cut those from a contrasting color of cardstock and layer those on. In this case, we are going to die cut that from some pink or a dark pink cardstock. And then we're going to finish the tips of the paintbrush, which I die cut from a bright colors so it looks like he's been doing an art project. We're going to finish those with glossy accents and add glossy accents to the eyes as well and let that completely dry. Looks like I forgot one of the little components for the paintbrush so I'm just going to add that there. This is some silver chrome cardstock that works really well, gives that paintbrush kind of look. And then the pink handles for the scissors. We're just going to add those in place. And I used a pair of craft tweezers to kind of help get the placement just where I wanted it to go. Now I felt like my card needed just a little something else. And so I'm going to be using some little heart embellishments on my card. These are little dimensional heart embellishments from uh, Lucy's Things. But you can use die cut hearts, you can use sequins, you can use all kinds of different little heart embellishments or star embellishments, whatever you want to use. You definitely don't have to do hearts, but I'm going to scatter a few down here near the bottom and a couple up above. So it kind of goes in a diagonal from the top left corner to the bottom right corner. And it adds a nice little dimensional touch to our card. I also want to mention that I did glue the arms of the little body down in place after I was done adding all of the um, craft supplies for him to hold. And then I just kind of secured that with my craft tweezers, held those arms down in place until the glue dried so that they didn't pop up. And here are those great little heart embellishments. It's a fun, chunky heart, which I think is really cute. And the colors worked so nicely with our rainbow frame background. And that's going to finish the first card. Now our second card, same basic design. We're just going to switch up the animal we're using, the big picture book animal. We're, and we're also going to change up the sentiments. So this is the other background. This is kind of the leftovers from the first card background. Because we already had all of these, we were able to create two very similar backgrounds. And I thought, while everything was out, let's go ahead and create another card. So this guy is going to be the big picture book monkey and then the big picture book medium body. I felt like the medium body worked better with this head. I kind of like to lay out the different bodies with the heads that, or whatever head I choose for the project, I will take the bodies and kind of see what works the best. So for the elephant, I really thought that the little body worked nice and paired well with that. For the monkey, I decided the medium body looked really good. And that's how I chose that. I also glued the thanks, the bold thanks die in place. You can see um, as I was mentioning in the first card that it was a little bit easier to glue that down first and then we'll attach the body to our card. And that worked really well. I have another sentiment strip artist little phrase here I trimmed into a strip and I'm adhering with foam adhesive. This one says from my heart to your hands. And then we're going to adhere the body to the card base just like we did with the first card. And then the monkey head, we're going to pop up with foam adhesive, just like we did with the elephant head on the first card. 
and that's going to give a little bit of dimension to the monkey. Now this guy is going to be holding the paint palette and a paintbrush. I felt like the paint palette worked a little better with the monkey than it did with the elephant just because uh, size wise the monkey is a tiny bit bigger, um, a little bit more substantial. So I gave him the paint palette and we're going to inlay and use foam adhesive to kind of secure that all together as well as pop up the head. That's just my favorite little tip and trick for all those little inlay pieces in any of the picture book or big picture book critters. If you are popping them up already, foam adhesive works awesome for all those little inlay areas. So you can see the insides of the monkey's ears are the Hero Hues peony pink color. And I'm just putting a foam adhesive square back behind there. And that's going to secure that little inlay piece as well as make it so that I'm easily able to pop up that head. We're going to tip his little head at an angle as well. Look how cute little chunky monkey there. We're going to make sure we add the inlay eyes. And then we've got our little artist paint palette and paintbrush. So the artist palette die cuts and it die cuts all those little holes. And I usually just take little scraps of cardstock when I am doing the paint palette and I'll only die cut a little portion of it out of that scrap of paper for all of the different colors of paint that we're adding into the palette. I also just took my scissors and trimmed a piece of this gray cardstock to place back behind the palette so I had something easy to inlay the paint colors in. And these are all the same colors that I used for the rainbow frames that go behind the critters. We're going to secure the monkey's arm again. Let's go ahead and kind of, I'm going to add glossy accents to the paint so it gives it that great glossy finish. Also the eyes on our monkey. And then I'm going to add my paintbrush and build the paintbrush with the layering pieces for that. And we'll add glossy accents to the tip of the paintbrush as well. With the glossy accents, I suggest not trying to go all the way to the edge of the color because it does tend to want to maybe uh, bleed outside of the line. So I like to just kind of add a dab in the center of that and then we're going to let that completely dry. It will dry completely clear and glossy and gives it that great paint palette type of look. The paintbrush itself, I did not mention with the first card, is actually some wood grain cardstock. And then the little layering piece is the silver chrome cardstock and then the colorful cardstock on the tip that we're going to finish with glossy accents. This card also features some heart accents. I just, just did three for this one. I felt like that's about all I needed. Again, the monkey and the body are a little bit bigger than the elephant. And so I didn't feel like I needed quite as much to add to the background of this card. And then we just don't want to forget that little silver piece that goes here on our paintbrush because it really gives it a perfect finished look. How much fun. So I hope these cards have inspired you to have your big picture book critters hold on to some fun art supplies or other types of die cut images to create some really fun card designs. Plus, you can use your basic die shapes and frames to create some really fun rainbow effect backgrounds. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this month's Making the Cut video. Please be sure to visit the Simon Says Stamp blog for more information.